Hey farm friends, welcome to Haven Acres. Thanks for joining me in the farm kitchen today. We are going to a little community farm outing this evening and we are all bringing things to share as you normally would. And we've been so busy, I just uh, hadn't put too much thought into what I was sharing. So I am making a strawberry rhubarb pie, which I have the ingredients for, but I thought what else what else can I make? What else can I bring? And with the fresh ingredients that I happen to have here, the uh, only thing that came to mind is something I've never made before. And I don't even know if I've eaten it before, but we are making carrot slaw today. And as I looked up a few recipes, I discovered that they're all similar, but a little different. And apparently Chick-fil-A has like a super famous one that either is or isn't on the menu anymore. I couldn't really tell, but we're gonna make one. So if you're interested in making a carrot slaw, feel free to hang out with me for a bit. We're gonna make one. I'm gonna show you how I'm doing it. It's definitely a little bit different than the recipes that I saw um, online because I just don't have all of the ingredients that they have so that's the beauty of cooking of uh, baking to some degree you use what you have and you can look at a recipe and substitute different things according to your taste or what you happen to have in your pantry so this is what we're doing today stay tuned for carrot slaw Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take our carrots. We need eight cups of carrots for this particular recipe that I'm making. So I don't really, eight cups of shredded. So not eight cups carrots, but after we shred the carrots, we need eight cups worth. I don't really know how many I'm going to need. So I'm just going to cut the ends where the greens come from. I'm going to cut those off, peel them, and then I will shred until um, I've got a little two cup measure here. I'll just go until I have eight cups and we'll call it good. You can see me pitching the tops into what appears to be my sink. I actually have a chicken scrap bucket in the sink. When you are cooking, when you're prepping, I'll give you this tip. If you like to keep your area neat, which I do when I'm cooking, have either a bucket for your chickens or a, just a garbage bucket in your sink. And that way, as you're working, you can just toss everything in there. And when I say garbage, I mean food scraps, not paper, plastic, that kind of thing. But food scraps in right in there as you go. That way it makes less of a mess. And at the end, you can either give it to your chickens, your pigs, put it in your compost pile, do with it whatever you do. Um, some people would put it in the freezer and save it for a soup stock, a vegetable stock. If that's what you do, that's awesome. Um, there's plenty of things you can do with the scraps from fresh veggies and fruit. Um, so that's what I do and that's why it looks like I'm just kind of chucking it in the sink. As I peel into the bucket, some uh, of the scrap is going outside of the bucket, so I will have a little bit of a mess to pick up, but definitely not as much as if I just did it on the counter. And 
when you are going to peel carrots, you don't have to cut the end off that was in the ground because as you peel, that's just going to naturally come off. And in fact, if these were farm fresh carrots from our garden, I would not even be peeling these. I would just wash them really well and use them with the skin on. But because these are store-bought carrots, then who knows? Um, so I'm peeling them. The recipes that I've seen for this slaw do not include any type of seed or nut. But if I had some sunflower seeds, which I don't, but if I did, I think sunflower seeds would be a great addition to this salad, to this slaw. If I like it, and I don't even know that I will, <laughs> I'm just making it because that's what I have. But if we like it, if I like it, I might try it again and add some sunflower seeds. I think it would just give it a nice additional crunch, a different texture, and kind of that buttery, fatty taste that sunflower seeds give. carrots or when I peel carrots rather I peel away from me I know some people do it towards them and the cooking shows that I've watched before like professional chefs the ones that I've seen go back and forth back and forth back and forth and I guess it is quicker that way but I just learned to go away from me so that's how I do it how do you peel carrots? Do you go away from you, towards you, or back and forth? Let me know in the comments. I'm kind of interested to see how other people have learned. Well, I can try it that way and it kind of is faster. It is, I think. But then you still have to go around the ends and just go forward, so. Own. Somehow I missed the end on this carrot. So let's get that out of here. And I'm not sure if this is going to give us eight cups of shredded carrot or not. We're just gonna shred away and if I have too much, no big deal, we'll toss that in. And if I don't have enough, I will just grab some more carrots. I suspect if you had a, um, what's it called? A uh, food processor, there. If you had a food processor, you could do this shredding of carrots much more quickly. I just personally enjoy, I don't know, I'm a little old fashioned, I guess. I enjoy shredding by hand, things like that. I'm not really an electrical appliance kitchen gadget girl or a kitchen gadget girl in any way. I need the things um, that are practical for me, but I do have a food processor. I actually just never use it. I thought about giving away the food processor many times and then I don't because I figure, well, someday maybe I'll use it. And someday maybe I will.
going to help me count. Here we have our first two. Get my shoulder workout today. You wouldn't think that you would have to put so much muscle and so much pressure into shredding something. You really do. Think about back in the day how, um, you know, You'll see movies or you'll see pictures of grandmas in the kitchen with their apron and generally they were, you know, maybe full-figured ladies. That's what that's what's shown in pictures and movies and such. But you think about really how strong women were physically strong back in the day. So even if they were um, a little more full-figured. Number one, they had many layers of clothing on, probably. And number two, kitchen work manually is hard work. You really do use a lot of muscle. Use a lot of muscle um, lugging 50 pound sacks of sugar and flour, crocks of pickles. Generally, if they were doing the kitchen work, they were also uh, potentially doing laundry, so they were lugging baskets of wet clothes out to the line, wet clothes are heavy, sweeping, all of those things we don't really think about, but the, the grandma from back in the day that did all of this uh, baking and cooking and taking care of the home in a manual way, she was a strong woman. All right, four, four cups. Definitely have enough carrots, so I'm going to have more than enough. That's okay, I'll just slice them up and we'll have some for lunch too.
right, eight cups, here we are. And since I'm standing here with carrots all peeled, I'm just going to quickly cut them up and get them ready for lunch. Whether it be lunch today, lunch tomorrow, they will get eaten. Do you tend to be a messy cook or a clean cook? I definitely try to be a tidy cook. I cannot stand messes. I get overwhelmed. I can't focus and I don't know. Maybe that sounds ridiculous to some people, but it's just too much for me if it's messy. So I try clean up as I go. And the chickens will be happy. All right, and I went ahead and got the rest of the ingredients together. It's really very simple. So I hope it tastes good. But um, we are using, for the rest of the ingredients, two cups of raisins, a half a cup of mayonnaise, and that is just regular mayonnaise. I just measured it out in the cup that I had shredded the carrots in, so it's got a little bit of carrot in there. But it's all going together, so it doesn't matter. No harm done. A third of a cup of frozen orange juice concentrate. So I just let this thaw out for a little bit so I could scoop it out. I use frozen orange juice concentrate a lot when I'm cooking and baking. And then a half a teaspoon of salt. So we have eight cups of carrots, two cups of raisins, a half a cup of mayonnaise, a third of a cup frozen orange juice, and a half a teaspoon of salt. That's it. That's all there is to it. We're gonna mix it together.
separate these raisins apart there. All, all kinds of stuck together. I made raisin oatmeal cookies the other day. And oddly enough, I had just enough left in the container for this. Works out like that sometimes. Slide this over a bit. So you can see how brilliant the orange is. Salt next. Just sprinkle it along so there's not a big clump of salt in there. Give it a little stir. Sprinkling the rest. Add our mayonnaise. This is store-bought mayonnaise. I really should get in the habit of making our own mayonnaise because it's really easy and we have plenty of farm fresh eggs. So I should do that. As you can see, the slaw or salad is not overwhelming with the amount of mayonnaise that is in it. Um, so some people don't really like mayonnaise. This might be a perfect recipe for those people. I like the green one, the little spatula, better. We're stirring. Try to get everything incorporated well and covered fully. Both the raisins and the shredded carrots have a tendency to want to stick together, so really have to work at it a little bit. And we want to make sure that that nice orange juice gets incorporated well. Now, the directions that I saw said that it needs to sit and refrigerate for at least a half an hour before you eat it. I'm sure like anything else that's of this nature, it just needs time to kind of let everything blend together, all the flavors to, to just kind of melt together before it will taste as good as it should. I'm going to just give it a little taste now to make sure that we have enough salt or sweetener in there. Well, 
it's different. I'm going to call it different. I think as it sits for a while, it's going to be really good. I can taste the raisins very strongly and I can minimally taste the orange juice. So I think it's going to be good. I'm going to leave it and later on today I'll taste it again and if I need to add some more salt or a little more orange juice, I will let you know. So if this is something that you think you would be interested in, as you can see, it's super easy. So give it a shot, take it to your next cookout or barbecue family gathering. If um, it's not something that you would normally make, there may be other people that really enjoy it and wouldn't normally make it themselves. All right, I got this in the bowl, ready to cover with some saran wrap, pop it into the fridge and we'll take it to the gathering later. But I just wanted to give you a shot of what it looks like. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Alrighty. Well, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. We're trying to grow it and give us a thumbs up if you liked it or if you just enjoy watching us. And again, we hope that you have a great day. Take care.